two years, about two years now. But um, I, I really see a strong calling on her life, and um, it's an honor that um, I asked her to come and speak. Um, her and her husband have a ministry, and um, they, they were serving in a ministry. So they've been, they've been serving in ministry since the time I've known them, and I think we met Jimmy before we met Margaret. So I just want to uh, ask you all to welcome Margaret Maddox, please. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, Tracy, I just want to say thank you. And I do want to confirm that you are a person that is going to change the world. And one of the reasons and one of the ways that you're going to do that is because when you look at people, you see what God has in those people. They may not see it in themselves. They may have no clue. But you help pull it out in people. And you give people opportunity. And that is one of the ways that God is using you to change this world. Because if you just think of the lives that you impact and the lives they impact and they impact and they impact, it's just like a trickle-down effect. And I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to stand up here today. She asked me to do this a year ago. And when she asked me, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And I got home and thought about it. And then I was like, what in the world did I just say yes to? I was like, no, no, you need to get my husband to do this because that's what he does, not me. Um, (laughs) But I know, I know, I know that I know that I know that being up here, having this microphone is really what God has called me to do. I have had many a prophetic word 10, 15 years ago that this is my calling this is my destiny that god has there's there's words there's wisdom there's things that god has put in me that i don't even know that's there and i haven't and i'm repenting now i haven't really given him the opportunity to let it out because i have hid behind my husband and his anointing hid behind his goodness and i've been there to support him and i still do but it was always i use it as an excuse to not be in this position and to not really just glorify God. Because anybody that stands up here, that's all they're here for. And if they're here for any other reason, then they need to sit down. I mean, no disrespect, but really and truly. So I I am a nervous wreck as I'm standing up here. I will just be honest. I'll lay it all out. But I know that there is reason and there's destiny for me to be here. I know that there is going to be something that I say that is going to touch somebody in here. So for a year now, so I've had a year to be nervous about this. Um, And not only that, this past year in, in our life has, it has been It has been one heck of a year, not necessarily for the good. Um, I've definitely been, we're always in the battle, but for me, I feel like this has been a battle that I don't even get any retrieve from. That it's like I, the moment I feel like I take a half a breath, it's like bam, again, and bam, again, and bam, again, and bam, again. So I have been in constant battle and I know that there has been a lot of glory in this battle too. That there's been a lot of things that I have overcome. There has been a lot of things that have happened inside of me that two years ago, I would have been like, done, run away, crying, hiding. And one of those things that I, I really feel impressed to share, and I really hope that I shared this with my husband because he is here, and I think I shared it with him already. Um, we have just had a, an, an attack on our home. There has been a spirit of death that has just tried to take us, take us out. And um, one, one early, early morning, my husband were up late talking, and we, he had fallen asleep, I had fallen asleep, and I woke up and I saw this, this man standing over my husband. And we have some friends that live in our basement, so I thought it was one of them. I thought it was a little weird that they'd be in my house at like 4 o'clock in the morning, you know, when I didn't know, and you know, whatever. But I was like, kind of like, well, what are you doing? And he turned around, and it was just, there was nothing, there was no face. It was just black. It was just a black, like, pants and a, a hooded sweatshirt, and there was no face. Now, two years ago, if I were to see that, and I wasn't dreaming, this was real. 
this was in front of me, just like Tracy, we were probably this close. Two years ago, I probably would have just lost it, ran out the door, called my mom, <laughs> something. I would have just been so full of fear that I would have ran away. But oh, not this past year. Nope. I was like, who are you? What are you doing in my house? And he said, well, I am the spirit of death. And I, I'm here. I'm going to take your husband. I said, oh, no, you're not. No. No. This is my house. That is my husband. This is my family. And you are not going to take him. As a matter of fact, you're going to turn around and leave. And he told me no. And I said, okay. And I got up. And I walked a little closer to him. And I said, yes, you are. And he's like, well, I was invited. I don't care. I don't care you were invited. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm telling you to leave. We have authority over this house because we are bought. We are bought. We are bought with the price. The blood of Jesus covers this house. I'm telling you to leave and you are going to leave. You are not going to harm my husband. You are not going to harm my daughter. You are not going to harm me or anybody that I love. You are going to leave. And he stood up, looked at me, turned and walked. That, that is just a testimony of me personally. Because I know that two years ago, I would have been a little scaredy cat. I would have. And I would have given in and I would not have looked, looked, looked that spirit of death right in the face and said, get out. I wouldn't have done that. But it's because of the battle that I have been in. That, that's where he's brought me. That even though things really kind of stink sometimes, it's hard to use that word stink, but they do. They stink sometimes. And even though that I've been fighting and I've been battling and I've been battling and I've been battling, I can stand back and I can see the growth. I can see where God has taken me. It may be baby steps. I may take a step, may take a half a step back, but I'm always moving forward. Always moving forward. Always moving forward. Always moving forward. So that was just a little side note, just to show you, just to show you that even in the midst of your battle, even in the midst of your pain or whatever you're going through, that God has purpose for it. And it doesn't have, to, the purpose is good. The purpose is for you. God is for you. He, he wants you. He wants more of you. He wants you to go from glory to glory. He wants your growth. He wants all of that for you. But when Tracy told me what the topic was going to be into his chambers, I was like, yes, you know, already being nervous. I was like, his chambers, how easy of a topic is that? I've been in his chambers. I know what, I know what it feels like to be wrapped in his love and in his peace and in his comfort and all the safety and, and all of those things that you think about when you hear into his chambers. So God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? I want to say something really profound about it you know, and he said, well, look, look, look up chamber, like actually read what the definition of a chamber is. And I was like, okay, so I did. And there were three, there were three definitions that kind of jumped out or really the website that I went to, those were the three that they had. And one of them was a private room, especially one used primarily for sleeping, a room in a palace, a private room. I was like, well, yeah, yeah, we know that right? That's what God's chamber is. It's a private place. It's a place where you meet him heart to heart. It's a place where you feel safe. It's a place where you can just rest and you can be in his presence. I was like, that's awesome. So then I started, you know, looking up all these scriptures, uh, Song of Solomon, my beloved speaks to me, arise my love, my beautiful one, and come away. The scripture that Tracy said about earlier about your love being better than wine. There was Many, many, many of them. Psalms 32 that says, You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. I probably looked up 80 scriptures that talked about that private place. 
And I, I got on my face and I prayed about it and I prayed about it. But it was like there was nothing. There was nothing, nothing that, I mean, I thought it was going to be easy. So there was nothing that God was telling me that I needed to say about it. So I was like, okay. So moving on, moving on to the next definition. In a firearm, this is another definition of a chamber. In a firearm, this is the portion of the weapon that holds the ammunition round immediately prior to its discharge. So then I was like, woohoo! I can do that. I can do that. I mean, if you really think about that, you, you sit there in the chamber, and God, all powerful, all knowing, and everything, He gives you everything in this chamber. He's building you up. He is, he's giving you the power to heal, to deliver, to rise from the dead, to do all these things. So then I got real excited. I was like, this is it. This is what God wants me to talk about. And I was just so excited. Because who wouldn't get excited about the power of God? Who doesn't get excited about knowing that that same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of you? Everybody should get excited about that power. And I was like, okay, I can do this. I can talk about that. I have found my topic. And again... Laid on my face, and this I really wanted this topic because this is power, and I like, I like power. You know, not in a bad kind of way, but I like to display the power of God because when people see the power of God, they can't deny it. It just is because it ain't me. It ain't me. It's got to be a higher power. They can't deny it. So I was all excited again. And again, I get on my face, and I'm praying, and I'm almost begging God, I need something, you know, times are running out, I got to come up with something, and nothing, it was like there was, there was just nothing that really grabbed me to say that, yes, this is what you need to talk about, you need to talk about that, that basic, that bullet being in the, being in that chamber, and just waiting for God to release you to let you go, but it wasn't there, that's true, and that's what he wants to do, but that's not what he wanted me to talk about, so the third definition that I read, a judge's office, a room where a judge transacts business, a place where a judge hears matters that do not need to be presented in open court. So I read that and I was like, well, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Frankly, that's exactly what it was. So I walked away from it. And then I went back to the fire thing because I wanted to do that. I wanted to be the bullet in the chamber. But nothing. I mean, I would sleep. I would, every, it's like every moment I kept hearing the judge's chambers, the judge's chambers, the judge's chambers. But I really fought it because I don't want to talk about that. Because people generally, you don't like to hear the word judgment because usually when you hear judgment, you always think of something negative that comes with it. So you don't, you don't want to hear about that. So I'm like, okay, God, you're, I'm standing in front of all these people. Give me something happy to talk about because I'm going to be nervous enough, so I need something a little uplifting, something happy for me to talk about. But as God does sometimes, he said, no, I need you to talk about God, the, the judgment, the judgment, the judge's chambers. So I was like, okay, I will do that. So then I went a little further, and I... I kind of looked up the definition of a judge and what the purpose of a judge is for. What, what is a judge for? Interpret the law. Assess the evidence that's presented. The judge hears all the witnesses and other evidence presented, assesses the credibility, and then issues a ruling on the matter at hand based on his interpretation of the law and his own personal judgment. Most important of all, judges are impartial decision makers in the pursuit of judgment or justice. God is our ultimate judge. There's so many scriptures in the, in the Bible that talks about God as judge. It's not really that popular of a topic again, but there are so many scriptures that talk about it. Isaiah 33, 22 says, God is our judge. He is the lawgiver. The Lord is our king and he will save us. Psalms 25, 8 through 10, the Lord is good and does what is right. He shows the proper path to those who go astray. He leads the humble in what is right, teaching them his way. The Lord heals with unfailing love and faithfulness all those who keep his covenant, obey his degrees. Psalm 7, 11 and 12, God is a just judge. And God is angry with the wicked every day. 
And if he does not turn back, he will sharpen his sword. There are many, many other scriptures that I, I read about how God is judge. And then as I was thinking back on this past year, I was, I was really seeing how I, I needed that, that judge. I needed that place where he could hear my case in privacy. All of us have issues, things about ourselves that we want to change. God frequently points out things about us that we need to change. And aren't you glad that he wants to do it in his chambers? And that he doesn't stand up right here, right now, and have in front of all of you guys and kind of just display all my junk? I, mean, I do understand that there is a time where other people may need to be involved. And I'm not saying, hear me, that I'm not saying that there never is. But there are a lot of things that go on in our mind, a lot of issues, a lot of concerns, a lot of wrong mindsets, a lot of, a lot of times that we think we love and we don't. There's a lot of times that we pass judgment and we, thought we didn't think we did. But all of, those, all of those places, all of those things, he does it in his chambers where it's just him and me. So I, as he spoke that to me, I really, my heart started to change and I got excited about the topic because a lot of us don't, we don't want to face anything that could be wrong about ourselves or anything that might need to be changed. So we almost kind of keep it hidden and live, live a life of hiddenness. I'm not saying you're the most terrible sinner in the world, but there's a lot of things about you that you keep hidden because of fear. But the judge's chambers is a place for, of safety. It's a place of peace. It's a place of rest. But it's, it's a place that you can present your case. You can present your feelings, your thoughts. And he can to you too. He can show you. He can show you things that are wrong that you never thought were wrong. He could show you things that are right. You can converse with each other in a place of privacy. He can hear the matters of your heart. And you can hear the matters of his heart in the judge's chambers. He is our ultimate teacher. So as we're, we're talking about this and as he's showing me the things that need to be changed or the things that are wrong or or even the things that I've repented to him. What, what better place to repent than in the judge's chambers? What better place? So as all of that is happening, him being the ultimate teacher, it's like I have my own private tutor all the time. He's just there, and he teaches me, and he, he shows me. He leads me in the path that I need to go. He takes me in the direction that I need to go because he loves me. And he's provided the opportunity. And the, the awesome thing about the judge's chambers is the judge's chambers is really wherever you go. It can be in your car. One of my, my favorite places where I meet the judge is in the shower. <laughs> because, especially now, because my husband and I recently have, um, are in the process of adopting a five-year-old. And we've had it for about a month. And you, I don't really get any alone time anymore. I mean, I have a 13-year-old as well, but, you know, she will at least let me shower without bugging me. Um, but the shower is really a place where you can be alone. So that's, it's an amazing, the judge's chambers is an amazing gift to us. We're there with the ultimate judge. We're there with the ultimate teacher. And the most awesome thing in all of this is even as he's passing judgment, oh, he's so full of grace and so full of mercy that even when he points out our faults or things that need to change, he does it with such love and such grace and such mercy. Yes. <laughs> and it's so safe. You, you, you can bear your soul and it's safe. And he lifts you up. He doesn't downcast you. He lifts your spirit up. He lifts your soul up. 
to where you need to be in the judges' chambers. And one of the other things that really, really, really struck me over the, the last year through all this battle is I had, I had gotten so angry because I felt like things were just unjust. Like, like people that I loved were just being treated wrong. It was just wrong. There were things that were just wrong. And I, I wanted to make it right. Just being honest. I mean, you know, if somebody harms your kid, that mother bear instinct kind of rises up and you just want to kind of gouge their eyes out sometimes. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I mean, does anybody feel that way? I mean, it's true. It's like you have this, 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 you go into protective mode. And I think over, over the battles, it's like I've been doing that. I've been, this protection thing has been rising up. And it's like, I've been so angry that I was like, I just, I just want, I just want to see justification. I just want to see the justification. And God, um, very politely showed me that that's not really my job. I know. I really, really, really wanted it to be. Because <laughs> I had all these ideas of how it could happen. And they were nice, most of them. And I really, really wanted it to be. And that, is probably, that has probably been the hardest thing for me. And I have failed. I mean, I asked my husband, I have failed. Um, and I have tried to do it myself. But God reminded me that he is, he is the, he's the vindicator, not me. And it doesn't matter how unjust something may seem. I mean, if you just look in the world, there is so much injustice. But he's the vindicator. He's my defender. He is your defender. He is our defense. I don't need to do it. He defends my family. He defends my fr he defends He defends everybody. He defends everybody. But it was really only until I got into the judge's chambers that I really realized that. That the judge's chambers is really a good place. It's really something you want in your life. And you need it in your life. Because where else, what other judge's chambers besides the ultimate judge can you go and bear everything and then reach out with such love and such grace and such acceptance? Where no matter what you say, there's nothing, nothing that you could say that would even change his opinion, would change his love for you. It would only, only grow it deeper, which is the craziest thing. It's the craziest thing to me. And it's like the more you bear your soul, I think it's like the more he just draws you close and draws you close and draws you close. I want to end with reading a Psalm 139. I, I was going to read just a couple verses, but as I read, I was like, you know, this is really good stuff. It's all good stuff. I don't want to leave anything out. Actually, most of the, I had, I literally probably had about a hundred scriptures I was going to read to you today. <laughs> but I thought I would spare you. <laughs> so I just picked out a couple. But I think this one is worth reading. And as you read, or as I read to you, just really think, think about the words. And this is the message interpretation, which kind of just puts it so bluntly. I mean, so simply. Just really think about it. Just really think about the words that I'm saying. Psalms 139. God, investigate my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you. Even from a distance, you know what I'm thinking. And how grateful I am. <laughs> you know when I leave and when I get back. I'm never out of your sight. Even when I try to be, I'm never out of your sight. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. I look behind me, and you're there. Then up ahead, and you're there too. Your reassuring presence coming and going. This is just too much. It's too wonderful. I can't take it all in. 
Is there any place that I can go to avoid your spirit? Is there any place I can go to be out of your sight? You find me in a minute, but you're already there waiting. (laughs) Then I said to myself, oh, he even sees me in the dark. At night, I'm immersed in the light. It's fact. Darkness isn't dark to you. Night and day, darkness and light, they're all the same to you. Oh, yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, high God, your breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. (laughs) The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. (laughs) Your thoughts, how rare, how beautiful. God, I'll never comprehend them all. And please, God, do away with wickedness for good investigate my life oh god find out everything about me cross-examine and test me and get a clear picture of what i'm about see for yourself whether i've done anything wrong then guide me on that road to eternal life that is some good stuff right there that is some good stuff i invite all of you ladies to to frequent the judges' chambers because it definitely has been life-changing for me. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Does anybody think that was her first time? That was her first time. Yes. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. Being able to be part of something. Us ladies are together. We're knitted together. Just being part of each other and 